my studio Masterlink Productions in Guildford in England. Today I want to show you my take on what I call proper old school tape flanging in Pro Tools. I primarily use Pro Tools, but I'm sure that the techniques I'm showing you can be translated into other uh, audio software, Logic, Ableton, uh, name your flavor, I'm sure you can get it to work. Um, there are many flanging plugins that you can get, um, but none of them really sound like proper tape flanging. You know, when you would have two tape machines playing the same program material and you adjust the pitch of one of, of, one of the tape machines and that creates a natural flange uh, with the one that is static. And then obviously you record the outputs of both of those tape machines back onto two channels onto your whatever, if you're using uh, Pro Tools or another, another tape machine. Um, the beauty of that is that when you're using tape machines is that when you adjust the pitch, of course, it adjusts the speed. So the speed can slow down and speed up. So effectively, you're sort of going in front and behind the audio that's already that, that, that is static. Obviously, in a DAW, you can't do that because you've got the timeline running. You can only really go, I suppose, forward in time. You can't go behind the playback marker. Anyway, so the technique I'm going to show you involves um, using a different session um, with some of the Elastic Audio plugins. Some of you who probably have discovered Elastic Audio and know how to use it probably know where I'm going with this, but I'm going to demonstrate anyway. So here's a track by a friend of mine called Tom Worth. It's called Start Again. There's Tom Worth and start again. Now, when we were mixing this track, um, this this track has actually been finished and has been released. Um, so it's quite a nice example to show you. Um, if you listen to it on Tom's uh, SoundCloud or uh, YouTube channel, you'll hear a version of flanging, which was actually before I knew how to do this. Um, so... It's actually around here somewhere. Where are we in the extended chorus? Out for help to start again. Yeah, so where it says bar 96, imagine that there's flange. So this is what I'm going to cre create with you today. So from bar 96 to bar 98, we're going to have some flanging. So if you can just imagine it now, I'm going to, I'm going to play it. Falling out for help to start again. Whoa! You can hear that the guitars do like a nice slide down. It's kind of, it's, it's a nice space uh, to have an interesting effect. So how to do it? Here we go. I have already created a stereo track down here and I've uh, labeled it flange track because what we're going to do, we're going to record the elements of the track which we want to be flanged. Now, I normally don't do anything that's got too much bass in it because it just doesn't sound quite right. So I actually take out... So sorry, I don't I don't record kick drums uh, or bass guitars, and actually I'm not going to record Tom's voice either because because it, it sounds a bit odd um, when it's flanged. But I'm going to do everything else, all the reverbs and stuff. So I'm literally going to select all the tracks. Here we go. I'm just going to deselect the ones that I don't want because that's a bit quicker. So both the kick drums and the kick room. Uh, let's have a little look, that's all fine. What's this, kick long? I'm not quite sure what that is, but let's take it out anyway. Um, oh yeah, bass guitar, that's done. And then Tom's lead vocal, there you go, that's gone as well. And then what I'm gonna do, you can see I have created an input on the flange track, bus 27 and 28. So I'm going to make sure that there's nothing on that on, just gonna make sure that I've got a clear send, which I do. So I'm now going to hold down Shift and Alt 
go to bus 2728 and then I get a bus created across all the channels that I want and again I'm going to hold down shift and alt click on the fader of one of them and they will all snap to zero now because I'm using analog summing um, you can see I've got, I've got my burl set up here where is it burl 2526 2324 blah 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 um, my outputs are pretty hot so I'm actually just going to I've created a master track for bus 27 and 28 I'm just going to knock that back by a couple of dB just to avoid any clipping okay we're now going to hit record on our flange track I'm going to mute it because we don't need to hear it right now I'm just and I'm going to record before and after so I can then trim it down so here we go so I'm now going to record uh, more bars than I need to for this bit so here we go calling out for help to start again Whoa! Great. See, it's still clipped a little bit, but that's okay. I think that bit's going to be gone anyway. So let's take that out of record, solo it, and hopefully we should have a track without any bass or kick drum or and, and vocal. <laughs> Not quite. Let's try again. So there was obviously another vocal in there, which I didn't need. Oh, chorus vocal. Yeah, let's get rid of that one. And I heard some of the doubling effect, which which I which I quite liked. I don't mind that being in there because that's quite quiet. So let's try that again. Here we go. Let's just take that out of the solo and mute it. Calling out for help to start again. Whoa, I don't wanna be here anymore. I'm cool. Let's check one more time. Let's solo that flange track. Great. Perfect. 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 Now, I actually only want these two bars here, so I'm going to get rid of those. Just put a little cross -fade. Let's just zoom in. That was Alt-F there. For those of you who didn't know, you can select any region and press Alt-F, and it will zoom onto that region for you, which is really helpful. So it's clicking there, Alt-F, bang. So let's just see what that sounds like. To start again. Oh, sorry. Let's solo it this time. Great. Now what I'm going to do, uh, this is really helpful to for later on when we bring, when we've exported this, put the flange on it, and we're going to bring it back in again. So I'm just going to consolidate the track using uh, Shift Alt Three, uh, but I've just I've snapped it to the grid. You can see here just so it's nice and easy when we bring it back in again. So Shift Alt Three, there we go. So we are flange track 0303. So that's the audio file that we're looking for. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to export it. Here we go. Start again, flange, bounced files. Great. So now we're going to open up or create a new session. I've already um, had a session ready to go. I've called it Start Again Flange. Obviously, make sure that it's the same sample rate and bit depth as your main session. First thing to do is to open up the tempo window if you haven't already. Got that one open. So here you can click the down arrow and make sure that you're fully zoomed in, which is this, bit, this uh, button down here because the amount of tempo that you're going to be um, changing is so minimal that you need to be zoomed in really far. And I also recommend that you have the density uh, toggle on its highest so well the lowest figure but highest density which is 50 milliseconds uh, doesn't matter what tempo it is so I just use the default 120 we're going to go to our finder we're going to find our session Tom Worth so start again Ah, I obviously saved it in a place which I didn't mean to there we go so flange track 0303 there we go. I'm just going to snap that to the front. You can actually press Y if you didn't know that. If you drag a track in fr from the uh, sorry, drag a file in from the finder, and it just sort of snap just just sits somewhere in the track. You can press Y, and it snaps to zero, which is quite useful. So let's just make sure this is. Um, I use heat as well, so make sure that's bypassed. Otherwise, you'll have 
double the heat, huh? so to speak. So let's just check it. Perfect. So first thing we're going to do now is we're going to create a new stereo track. And this is going to be called Flange Track. So the first thing we do is copy the track down to that other track. So now we have two of them. So this is effectively now, this is our first tape machine. This is our second tape. This is our second tape machine. Now this is where it gets fun. So we now we have to select vary speed in our elastic audio. And then this is really important. You have to change samples, if that's your default, to ticks. But this one must be in samples. I could do a whole other video on samples and ticks. And if you want to do your own research, you can now. Uh, well, not right now, after you've watched this video. But um, I would suggest doing some research on samples and ticks because they're really useful when you're doing uh, tempo, ch uh, tempo stretches and time changes and all that, all that stuff. So we've got very speed. Uh, we've got ticks for this one and samples for that one. Obviously, no elastic audio for that one. Now we're, we're going to go to our pencil. And we are literally going to draw a line, a nice up and down line, whatever lines sort of takes your fancy, really. And what that's done, you can see now that it's moved this track around. And what's great, it's done it in pitch and in time, which is why we use very speed, because that's what that one does. Now what we're going to do, we're going to play them both. Just going to make sure that my outputs are the same. And you'll hear some proper flanging. Here we go. I tell that's a little too much actually, so I'm going to do that again. Let's go quite shallow and then a bit bigger there. Here we go. Let's try that. Oh, yeah, that's wicked. Really, really cool. So once that's done, come back down to your Elastic Audio and we go Rendered Processing and that will render it for you. And then just for luck, I then do a consolidation file. So I go Shift Alt 3 and that also names it for me as well, which is quite useful. So that's now rendered. So let's export that out into our Start Again Flange Track Bounce Files. Bang, there we go. That's done. Let's go back to our main session. Oh, you just saw a reference track of Dare You To Move mixed by Tom Lord Algae, uh, who's a fabulous mix engineer who actually showed me another way of doing flange, but I actually prefer this one. So let's. Um, here's our flange track. So I'm going to create a new playlist because obviously we don't want that one anymore. We're going to go to our finder. Here's our, so here we go. Here's our start again flange, bounce files. Here's our flange track. And we're going to insert it at bar 95 which is exactly where the original track was. There you go, you can see it. You can just see, look, when I'm flicking between the two playlists, there's a, if you can see that on your screen, maybe, maybe you can't, but there's just a slight sort of shifting of the waveform where it's been stretched and pulled around a little bit. Let's solo it. What's great is that you can actually hardly hear any any difference because it's being moved in pitch and time. So there's no artifacts. If you were just doing it, if you were just doing time stretching, or if you were just doing pitch stretching, you would hear the artifacts. But because you're doing pitch and time, there are no artifacts, which is fantastic. Which is why this 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 works so well. So moment of truth. Here we go. Let's take it out solo. I'm gonna have it quite loud so we can hear it. Let's hit play. Out for help to start again. Whoa. I don't want to be here anymore. Wicked. Proper analog tape flanging in Pro Tools. Please go and try that for yourself. I'd love to hear your comments of how it's worked for you. And if you can actually figure out how to do it in the main track without having to bounce the audio out to a separate session, I would love to hear about it.
Thanks again. My name's James Welch here at Master Linkdown in Guildford in England. You can follow me on Instagram at MLP underscore studios for loads of cool pics and videos. Hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching.